So I thought today we would talk about uh, the mechanics that are used in some vintage toys, specifically toys that you just turn on and yet then they perform two different functions like uh, maybe a robot that walks and that stops walking and it rotates or maybe uh, a dog that's walking then it sits and flips over or uh, just think of any two different actions and you're going well, how does it make those, that sequential change what's the mechanical sequencer that they're using in there and in most cases one of the most popular ones is a two gear setup with a little ramp now I can't see the viewfinder very well but I'm hoping that ramp is showing up in there right now the two gears are in their separated mode they're pushed apart and here you can kind of see an opening in that top gear that that little ramp can drop into and when it does the two gears are going to come together so you're going well what's going to make the ramp get in the right position to drop in that well the way they do that is the motor turns this gear which is a gear reduction and then this gear turns that long gear that whole copper looking thing that's one gear the full length so that both these gears are driven by that one shaft. So if one of these gears has one tooth less than the other, and let's get the camera closer, you can almost see, well you'll see better after we run it and the two gears drop together, that one of the gears has more teeth than the other, which is what it comes down to. Um, I don't really remember the correct polarity on this. I have two, uh, two batteries connected up to these leads. I want to think that was reverse of what my brain thought it should be. So I'm going to power up the motor. It's going to start spinning everything. And then we should see these uh, two gears drop together. Unless I have it hooked up wrong, in which case everything's going to jam up. Oh, there they went together. So right now, that little ramp has, if I can get it where the camera can see it, has dropped down into the slot. And so what's going to happen is as the gears continue to rotate, that ramp's going to reach the end of the slot. And since it can't go any further, the ramp will start pushing the two gears apart. Like that. So when, the, when that happens, that moves the shaft up and down. So the shaft would normally have a gear on it. And when it's all the way down, that gear is going to engage. In the case of this, was out of an, a rotomatic robot. When the gear's all the way down, it's going to engage the mechanics that make the legs move. And then when the gear is up, like it is right now, the it no longer would engage the walking mechanism. It would now engage a large ring gear, which makes the entire body of the robot spin around. So let's take another look at another example like that. This one's from a larger rotomatic robot and in this case the two gears instead of putting a slot in one of them see if I can rotate this to where it would be better in view of the camera so what I'm bringing around now instead of cutting a slot in one of the gears they've actually built a little platform right there and this piece back here is the ramp Right now, the two gears are in their furthest apart position. And when I power things up, if I can remember where the wire is. Come here, wire. That's not the right wire. Here it is. I'm going to power things up. There. Now they've dropped close together. In this case, the two gears don't all come all the way together because there's that physical... Um, wall ramp instead of cutting a notch see they could have cut a notch in this gear and then that ramp would just drop into the notch but rather weakening the gear they wanted to keep the gear as strong as possible they simply built a place where that ramp could drop down and now as this gear crawls around it's going to see that edge on it is going to hit that ramp and walk it back up when that does walk it back up, in this case, 
this gearbox did two different things. This gear down here engaged the walking of the legs, and when that would raise up, the walking of the legs would stop. But then this gear up here engages with this funky looking one, and this was actually used to open the door and make the guns come out. And it'll rotate around till it gets to this open spot, and it has a spring which uh, will tend to make it return. So first let's watch the two gears. They're going to be crawling apart. This normally ran on more than three volts, so it happened quicker. So you saw how they just crawled apart. Now look in the top here. Nothing's moving because it's got the door open now. It sprung back because the gear went down. And you can watch as the gear comes up and engages the mechanism again. Coming around, here it comes. Coming up. So it engaged and it now would have opened the door and the guns would be out. So that's how this particular uh, toy used the ramp walker, whatever you'd like to call it. Now another popular way of doing with one motor that's simply on all the time and shifting gears is to use a cam. So right here they have a small cam and then you have a lever and the lever is going to push on some gear someplace. In this case, see how it can raise and lower that gear? When this gear is all the way down, it engages this gear, which in this case went to a bump and go drive. And when it uh, was an up, it engaged, the bump and go drive would stop. It engaged another shaft, which in turn ran a noisemaker, a light flasher, and a drive that went up to the top of a head to spin some antennas and rotors and stuff like that. So now you can see that cam is coming around slowly. Right now the robot would be moving in bump and go mode. And there's the cam lifted. So now the robot's head's moving and it's no longer bumping and going. When it gets to the end of, end of that cam it'll drop back down. Now we're back in bump and go mode. So you can see how you can do the same thing with a lever. The, uh, the lever is driven, the cam if you will, is driven from this gear which is driven by which you can't really easily see in any way that I can hold it but there's a worm gear on the end of the shaft so the, the motor is geared down turning this gear, that gear turns this one which gears it down more, there's a little gear in the bottom there that turns this gear and this same shaft of this gear has that worm gear on it which drives this cam at a much slower rate and by putting a long gear on there and it doesn't matter if this gear is up or down it keeps being driven so that's how they would do it using a cam control now there are a lot of toys that have a single motor that perform two functions but they do it in a different way instead of the motor just being turned on they do it by reversing the direction that the motor runs so this mechanism, as you can see, is a set of arms, and they have two functions. They can open and close, or they can go up and down. So there are two separate gearboxes in here, one over on this side and one over on this side, but there's a single motor. And I don't know how well it's going to show up in there, but there's a gear off that motor, off that pinion, I don't know if enough light's getting in there for you guys to see it, but there is a gear that can flop from one side to the other. So depending on which way the motor's running, it'll it'll fling the gear over and drive one function. Well, I believe over here would be uh, arms open and close, or it can fling it over this way and then it would be arms up and down. So I'll hook the power up randomly here one way, and we'll see what function is happening. Okay, so now we have the arms up and down happening, which is uh, turning a crank over here that moves the arms up and down, and you can see the position that the motor is in in there, running that. So now let me reverse the battery connection, reverse the motor direction, and it should now engage, and it is, the open and close function. See how the arms are now open, and now they're closing. And they did that by just simply slinging that gear over into the other direction. 
This would normally be found on toys that have a, a wired remote control, vintage toys that have two, two push buttons. So one button would run the motor in one direction or the other. Obviously it doesn't have to just be hands. And this same robot, this is out of our Mr. Mercury robot. The lower half of the robot does the same thing with one motor. When you push one button, the robot walks. When you push the other button, still only one motor, the robot bends at the waist. So they can perform two functions with, with one motor. Two gearboxes. So I'd had some questions about how this these kind of mechanisms work and what I, what I meant when I was talking about a spinning ramp. It's really a cam and a lever, but it's in a spinning form. And the most common version is not always plastic gears, but unfortunately a lot of them are, but it will be the, the gear that has a notch cut in it and the ramp goes up into it. It's the one you're going to see the most uh, often.